Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Kate and today I wanted to talk about a book that I finished reading yesterday and I probably wasn't going to film a review of it just because I tend to only talk about things if I loved them just because I feel like it's more fair to sort of give space to things that are really enjoyable as opposed to things that are sort of meh like 6 out of 10 a Dodie reference <laughs> but I really liked this book and I thought it was quite unique and so I thought I would talk about it anyway. I haven't told you what the book is yet, I shall do that. Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. It is a young adult fantasy book, it's probably the best way to describe the genre. It is very fantasy in setting and in sort of plot drive, but I found it quite enjoyable, which I wasn't expecting because I'm not someone who typically goes for fantasy. But I would like to talk a bit about it and what made it such a good book, despite the fact that I primarily would go against its whole, you know, premise. Why am I I'm so bad at talking? <laughs> I'm going to hold it here just for a little bit. So Cinderella is Dead starts off with a very interesting premise. It is the idea that the sort of folk tale of Cinderella is the basis of law and order for this kingdom called Mersai, which is very obviously based on sort of rural medieval France. But the story of Cinderella has been used to create law and order in this country for the last 200 years since Cinderella died. And so the country is very much ruled by a patriarchy, there is a king, men are immediately put in position above women, and all girls are legally required to attend a ball at the age of 16, in which she will be chosen by a man, who will then take care of her, or if she fails to meet someone, she has two more chances to go at age 17 and 18, but if she is for some reason kicked out of the palace, or if she doesn't succeed in getting a husband during those three balls, she is considered forfeit and sent to the countryside to work. So the story begins with a protagonist called Sophia, who is the beautiful woman on the cover. I feel like one of the biggest shout outs for this book already is just the cover is absolutely stunning. I love good cover design, as anyone does really. But the story starts out with Sophia, who has all her life not really believed in the king, King Manford, who rules the kingdom, and the way that things are, with girls being subordinate to men the whole way through their lives. And there is the additional pressure that she is in love with her best friend, Erin. So she has extra reason to not want to go along with these things. So the book starts with Sophie preparing for her first ball at the age of 16. And I don't want to go into too many details of the plot because I would end up in very spoiler-heavy territory very quickly. But I will say Sophie finds reason to leave the ball and soon becomes sort of embroiled in a plot to try and bring down the king and try and install some sense of <laughs> not patriarchy in the kingdom. I didn't really go into this book with particularly high expectations, I must admit. As someone who doesn't really like YA fantasy, I do hold quite prejudiced beliefs about YA fantasy and how it tends to be a bit underdeveloped, a bit cliche, very cishet, white heavy, but I was really pleasantly surprised by this in that it takes one book to engagingly create a world and that from there it takes you on a really really interesting adventure about systemic change, about patriarchy and about the ways that resistance can work. Now what I will say is from the off this book has fantastic representation. Sophia is very clearly stated from the very beginning of the book to be a woman of colour. She is co continually referred to as dark-skinned, so there is no sort of racial ambiguity. She is a LGBTQ woman of colour, um, and she meets numerous other people of colour throughout the books. She meets numerous other LGBT characters throughout the book, and I think that is definitely one of the strongest parts of this, is it is a story of queer women of colour rising up against a system that doesn't support them to try and make change and that is just fantastic. I bought this book initially because I've been really making a push to try and read more diverse literature. YA is quite a white, straight, saturated genre, and so I've really been trying to find more books with 
that are written by people of colour, that have people of colour protagonists and lots of not straight relationships. That was my intent really with buying this book, was to sort of try and broaden these shelves from being very white hetero heavy. But I think what this book really does well is that it manages to get across a fantasy world and fantasy concepts in one book. <laughs> which is very unusual. Fantasy tends to be trilogies or duologies minimum in YA, and so it was very refreshing to be able to find a fantasy book, one that I enjoyed, and two that wasn't going to take me weeks to read it all, because I do not have time to sit with weeks of a fantasy world. Probably the most interesting thing that it discusses is the fact that systemic change is needed in order for there to be equality in a society. The whole way through the plan is that they will get rid of the king, but there is so much discussion of what happens once the king is gone. The world doesn't suddenly go to being an equal place just because one evil figurehead is gone. So there is plenty of discussion of the fact that this is constant systemic change that is needed in this country before it can truly be a place of equality, regardless of whether or not King Manford is gone. Also, King Manford... <laughs> It's a little heavy-handed sometimes, and I did find that some of the world-building and magic within the story is a bit thin. Of course, as I said, the premise of the book is that the story of Cinderella is law and order, but there is no real explanation of how much of it is true. You know, the people believe in everything from Cinderella's fairy godmother turning up and magically solving everything, and then they get married and live happily ever after. But there is very little discussion of whether or not magic is really real in this realm, or whether this is just a story that people believe in. There is a character who gets a bit screwed over because she genuinely believes that the magic will help her out for the ball, and then it doesn't. Um, but there is a witch character which turns up, I will not give spoilers, but there is a witch character who can do magic, and I did feel that it was a little bit difficult to understand what the stakes were if there was clearly some kind of magic system but that it wasn't really explained how prevalent it was and how it worked. Really that was minor detail. I did find the book a bit slow going initially. It takes about 100 pages for Sophia to actually go to the ball which I was starting to go okay can we can we get the shifting along please but by the time it got started and by the time Sophie had actually left the ball and was on the run I was I was invested. The way they deconstruct the myth of Cinderella within this country is just phenomenal. There is There are so many instances where Sophia has to question the beliefs that she's been forced to hold her whole life about Cinderella and about the ball and about the way the story even was that are just so well done and some of the plot twists with regards to that are just, I was thrilled. I was hooked. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the book pretty much. I thought this was a really really solid YA fantasy with fantastic representation, some really good discussion of quite modern and quite topical issues, and was generally really really good fun to read. I was invested in these characters, I was invested in their efforts, and I was thoroughly in it for what they were trying to do which is not always the case in some YA fantasy, but there you go. There is my review of Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. Thank you very much for watching, I hope this was interesting and informative and that I didn't spoil anything. If I did spoil anything, please let me know what I should flag for, you know, hashtag spoilers, because I don't want to ruin this for anyone because I think it is a good book and that it is, it is all the better for not knowing exactly what all the plot twists are. But yes, do give it a like if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to watch more of my little reviews and things. But for now, I will go and do some more reading. Yeah, have a good day, en enjoy your books, enjoy your reading. Let me know what you thought about this book if you read it. Um, I hope other people enjoyed it. I saw a lot of positive reviews on Storygraph, which is the... Goodreads equivalent that I use. I have my link to my story graph down in the description, which I forgot to mention in my first video. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time. There we go. I am presentable. I am ready to talk to a camera again. And girls have to go to a... Her friend, I'm, I'm spoiling too much of the book, I need to stop talking. I am very
very pretty today. I'm enjoying how I look. <clears throat> Back on tiptoes.